Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Let's get started with a programming note. Thanks to the Thanksgiving Day holiday here in the U.S., we'll be off for the rest of the week and there will not be an AutoLine After Hours program tomorrow night either. Okay, now let's get to the news. And we should start off today with a simple question. Should you buy Tesla stock or should you short it? A new study from Bank of America Merrill Lynch says the recent fires involving the Model S are not the biggest threat to its stock value. The company's stock peaked at over $190 a share earlier this year, but it's tumbled down to about $120 today. Merrill Lynch says the stock will continue to slide, but not because of possible recalls involving the fires, but because Tesla's sales goals are unrealistic. The report says Tesla would need to sell around 350,000 cars annually by 2020 to justify its current value, and it concludes that the company's price objective should be about $45 a share. So the short seller should have a field day with this, but remember, Tesla stock has defied all logic and the bears got slaughtered last time around. We've told you about the steer-by-wire system on the new Infiniti Q50, but we just only recently learned it took 10 years to develop that technology. Most automakers would have given up long before that. Amazingly, engineers at Nissan spent 70% of that time just trying to get the feel right. They wanted a one-to-one ratio, where the input at the steering wheel was the same as the output at the tie rods. They were ready to give up several times, but through sheer perseverance, they got the system right. It's a costly and complicated system, with three redundant ECUs controlling the steering. In time, Nissan hopes to eliminate two of those electronic control units, but in the meantime, they wanted to have a backup system to the backup system. One day, Nissan believes all cars will use steer-by-wire. A study commissioned by automakers and oil companies says that Europe needs to do more to increase the use of biofuels that are not made from food crops. By 2020, by law, 10% of the fuel used by EU nations must be biofuel. The report says Europe needs to do more. It says that advanced biofuels could become as much as 20% of the market by 2030 if the EU takes those steps. And you know, this is all about reducing smog and CO2 emissions. The EU recently delayed a 2020 CO2 target of reaching 95 grams per kilometer because German automakers said they could not reach the standard by then. I keep saying the easiest solution is to take the carbon out of the fuel, and biofuels are the fastest way to do just that. The Asia and Oceania regions are key markets for Honda, especially for subcompact cars, and that's why the Japanese automaker just unveiled the fourth generation of its city sedan in India. It's based on the fit and will be powered by either a 1.5 liter gasoline or diesel engine. Although only one image was released, you can see that the next gen car gets a new front fascia design and a stronger bone line running down the side. The city is scheduled to launch in India in early 2014 and will eventually be sold in 60 different markets around the world. Hey, coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Drew has a couple of questions about the new Colorado. One, why was there a one to two year market lapse with the old Colorado? And two, Other than new skin and less competition, what makes this version more likely to gain consumer interest and succeed? Well, the old Colorado never sold that well, and the decision to drop it came out of all that bankruptcy planning. The new one is more likely to succeed because GM is dead serious about being competitive in the compact truck segment in the U.S. Kit Gerhardt says, 
It's nice that automakers are working on fuel cells, but I'm not sure what the point is when there's no fuel for them. I guess that might change when there are unlimited quantities of free electricity to produce hydrogen by electrolyzing water. I'm not holding my breath though. No, nope, don't hold your breath because this is going nowhere. Look, automakers are only coming out with fuel cells and battery electrics because government regulations around the world are forcing them to do so. Take those mandates away and almost every automaker would drop those programs this afternoon. You know, I keep asking, how many infrastructures can we afford? An EV infrastructure and a hydrogen infrastructure and CNG and LPG? You get to pick one because that's all we can afford. Oh, but before you pick that one, we need to go spend all that money to fix our road and bridge infrastructure. HTG is wondering, do you know anything about how long hydrogen will sit in a tank before it evaporates away? Well, if it's liquid hydrogen, it will boil away in about two weeks time. And that's in a cryogenically protected tank with the hydrogen stored at 400 degrees below zero. And yeah, I'm saying boil away because it boils at room temperature. And that's why those fuel tanks are so horrifically expensive. And that's why automakers are looking at other ways of storing hydrogen, such as a gas. But then you give up all that energy density. Bradley wants to know, why did GM pull the EV1 off the market and destroy the inventory? There are a few conspiracy theories. One, GM became afraid of pioneering a future simple low maintenance vehicle. Or two, GM received big money from big oil to walk away. Come on, big oil bought off General Motors? Let's get serious. GM dropped the EV1 because it was losing money on every one it sold. But I think GM management gave up way too easily. The car was only sold in California and Arizona. It was never offered overseas where it would have found a more receptive audience. And you know, they could have offered a small three or four cylinder gasoline engine in there instead of the batteries. And that would have sold enough of them to keep that program alive, including the electric version. NDT, and it, what's that? NDYT says, South America runs on ethanol. Why can't we? Well, let's get accurate. Brazil runs on ethanol, not South America. But your point's well taken. Whereas in the U.S., you hear ethanol opponents complain that E15 will ruin engines. You cannot buy gasoline in Brazil that's lower than E22. So the answer is we can run on ethanol. But it's become such a political hot potato in the U.S., the program is not making any progress. GM veteran opines that Ron Burgundy generated additional attention, but I hardly think those ads are responsible for the sales increase alone. The one thing they have done is to create a lot of press for Dodge ad executives. Well, you know, actually, you can thank those ads for the burst of sales for the Dodge Durango. Sales were sort of languishing until the day those ads appeared, and that is when sales took off. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments. We truly like going through them all. But that wraps up today's show. For all of you in the U.S., please enjoy the Thanksgiving Day holiday, and I wish everyone else a great week. And then join us again here next Monday.